do some corrections for your quiz. I'm just going to start with number one with the expression of y equals negative x squared plus x plus 6. It asks you to identify a, b, and c. Well, a, b, and c are the coefficients. They're numbers, only numbers, in front of variables. So only numbers. Do not give me a variable when you're telling me what a, b, and c are. In this case, a is the one, the number, in front of the variable x, um, x to the power of 2. So it doesn't look like there's a number in front here, but whenever it doesn't look like there's a number, there's actually a hidden 1. And in this case, the number will be negative 1. So your a value is negative 1. Your b value, again, it doesn't look like there's a number there, and you guys have learned this. Um, so the b value is positive 1, and the c value is the one at the end, which is just 6. So that, was one, uh, that would be one mark each if you can label A, B, and C. Remember, only numbers, no variables. So for question 2A, uh, it asks us to expand and simplify. So expanding means to multiply. So what can we expand here? Well, we have an x plus 2 squared. An x plus 2 squared means that it's x plus 2 times x plus 2. You need to make sure that you expand this binomial times this binomial. It's very important, otherwise students tend to forget that a binomial times a binomial gives you a trinomial. So if you're trying to skip some time, um, you may just lose marks because you're not going to have the right final answer. So take your time and let's start with x times x, which is x squared. x times 2, which is positive 2x. Now we start with the 2 and we go 2 times x, which is positive 2x and 2 times 2, which is positive 4. Now, some people like to keep this in a bracket to keep it separated from the plot positive 3 at the end. Now, don't do anything with this positive 3, and I really recommend that you do expand uh, the binomial times the binomial first. So leave that plus 3 at the end, just leave it, and we'll work with it at the end. So we're going to simplify what's inside the bracket, and 2x plus 2x is positive 4x. So again, if you want to keep this in a bracket, that's fine. But at this point, you should recognize that there's nothing else happening with x squared plus 4x plus 4. Um, there are no like terms inside this bracket, which means that we can just go ahead and take the brackets down. There's also not a distribution to be done, so that means you can just drop the brackets. Um, when you do drop the brackets, you should recognize that there are two constants at the end, and 4 plus 3 is 7. So anytime you can do some math, that's what simplifying means. Do it. Uh, for question 2b, it's basically the same thing, so I'm just going to rewrite that here, 3w minus 4 times 3w plus 4. So we're just going to go ahead and do our FOIL, so our first ones are 3 times 3w times 3w. Now 3 times 3 is 9, and w times w is w squared. Don't forget the squared, otherwise it's not a quadratic relationship. Uh, 3w times 4 is positive 12w. Negative 4 times 3w is negative 12w. And at the very end, we have negative 4 times positive 4, which is negative 16. There are no other numbers around it, so we've done our binomial times our binomial, which is supposed to give us a trinomial. But in this case here, positive 12 minus 12 is actually a zero pair. So they actually get cancelled out and leaves us with 9w squared minus 16. Uh, w squared and 16 are unlike terms, so you end up with this as the final answer. I recommend that you guys try this on your own. If you need to pause the video, of course you can do that, but really try to do as many numbers as you can on your own and then use the video to help you. So now we start with question 3a, which is to fully factor. So we've got 2x squared plus 16x plus 8. Now when it says to fully factor, if it even just says to factor, you have to look for a common factor. That's the very, very first thing you're going to do in any problem that you do for factoring. So let's take a look here. Between 2, 16, and 8, we actually can divide all of these numbers by 2, which means that the common factor is 2. So I'm going to go ahead and write the common factor. So equals 2. Don't forget to put it in the front, otherwise it doesn't work. So I'm going to open up a bracket and say, 2 times what? will give me x squared. Well, 2 times x squared will give me 2x squared. 2 times what will give me positive 16? So 2 times what will give me positive 16? 
Well, 2 times positive 8x will give me 16x. Now, 2 times what will give me positive 8? Well, 2 times 4, with a plus in front, will give me positive 8. I close my bracket. So as of here, I factored out a 2. I did a common factor. That doesn't mean that we're done, because it says to fully factor. So we have to take a look, and there are three terms. The only time, the only thing, sorry, that you can do here when there are three terms is factor by decomposition. Or there might be a perfect square. So let's see if there's a perfect square here. The way to check this is you take the square root of a, and the a value in this case is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. The square root of c in this case is positive 4. So we're going to do the square root of 4, which is 2. So this part works, but to, to make sure that this is a perfect square, we need to multiply the 1 and the 2 by positive 2 or negative 2. We have to take a look at the sign that b has. And b has a positive sign. That means we're going to try multiplying by positive 2. So positive 2 times 1 is 2, and 2 times 2 is equal to 4. And that is not equal to my b term, which is 8. So factor or perfect square is not an option. So we're going to try doing factoring by decomposition. So factoring by decomposition is essentially what we call the ACB method. So we're going to label our A, which is 1, our B, which is 8, and our C, which is 4. And we're going to do A times C, which is just AC. My AC will be 1 times 4, which is 4. My B value is 8. So we need to find two numbers that multiply to 4. Well, 1 times 4 gives me 4, and 2 times 2 gives me 4. Those are the only two possibilities. Now we're going to try to arrange these two numbers to give us 8. 1 plus 4 is 5. Negative 1 plus 4 is 3. Uh, positive 1 minus 4 is negative 3. So none of these options work. Same thing with 2. 2 plus 2 is 4, so that doesn't work. 2 minus 2 is 0. That doesn't work. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0 as well. So none of these options work, which means that we cannot continue factoring. This is it. Taking on a common factor is factoring. So we're going to move on to question 3b. And for question 3b, we've got 25n squared plus 120n plus 144. So here we have three terms. So it could be a perfect square. Let's check. My a value is equal to 25, my b value is equal to 120, and my c value is equal to 144. So we're going to go ahead and check if the square root of a works, and if the square root of c works. So let's see if that works. Square root of 25, which is 5, square root of your c, which is 144, is 12. Okay, so square root of a is the square root of 25, and the square root of c is the square root of 144. Now we're not done checking. We have to multiply our 5 and our 12 by positive 2 or by negative 2. In this case, my b sign is positive, so I'm going to multiply all of this by positive 2. 2 times 5 is 10, and 10 times 12 is 120. So this does work because my b term is positive 120. This means that you can Press, put an equal sign, open up a bracket, and square it. You're squaring it because you're, both your factors are going to be identical. So from here, we say what times what gives us 25n squared? Well, 5n times 5n gives us 25n squared. And that comes from here. What times what gives us 144? Well, 12 times 12 gives us 144. Don't forget a sign in the middle. Now, because my b value is positive, it's 5n plus 12 squared, and that is your final answer. I'll just put it in one color so I just don't confuse anybody, and there it is. So make sure you practice this and recognize this. Yes, you can use the ACB method, so factoring by decomposition. It just takes longer. So you can do it, you're just going to waste some time though. Question 3C. So for question 3C, we're dealing with three terms again. We have 6 sides squared, minus z minus 1. Now here, we have to look for a common factor. Is there a common factor between 6, negative 1, and negative 1? And the answer is no, there isn't a common factor, but there always is a common factor. The common factor 
can always be used is 1. In this case, we don't do that because it's not necessary. So we're going to label our A, which is 6, our B, which is negative 1, and our C, which is also negative 1. And we'll start by doing our A times C method, which is 6 times negative 1. Well, 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. Our B value is negative 1, so we're going to go ahead and try the factors of negative 6. 1 times 6 gives me 6, and 2 times 3 gives me 6. Notice how I don't put any negatives just yet. So if I work with 1 and 6, negative 1 plus 6 is 5. That doesn't work. Uh, positive 1 minus 6 is negative 5. That doesn't work. Um, 2 plus 3 is 5, so two positives won't work. 2 minus 3 is equal to negative 1, which does work. So I have to put a negative in front of my 3 because 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. So my two numbers are 2 and negative 3. Now, I have to do decomposition here. So if I try decomposition, I'm going to decompose this middle term. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and rewrite my 6z squared plus 2z minus 3z and minus 1 at the end. This is the method of decomposition. Once I've decomposed the middle term, I can go ahead and factor by decomposition. When you're factoring by decomposition, you have to find the common factor between the first two terms. Common factor is 2z. 2z times what gives me 6z squared? Well, 2z times 3z gives me 6z squared. 2z times what gives me positive 2z? 2z times 1 will give me 2z. If you just double check here by doing your distribution, you'll see that when you multiply, it will give you the top two. Next, between negative 3z and negative 1, you have to find a common factor. Since there's always a common factor, we're going to take out a positive 1. 1 times what gives me negative 3z? 1 times negative 3z. Now, you have to make sure that these two top numbers, or front numbers, match, and they don't. So we are going to erase this, and instead of positive 1, we're going to take out a negative 1. So negative 1 times 3z still gives me negative 3z. And negative 1 times positive 1 gives me negative 1. So now I can rewrite the two brackets that match as 3z plus 1, and multiplied by 2z minus 1. So there you go. This is your final answer right here. If you expand, you'll see that it will give you the answer from the top. The reason I didn't do a perfect square here is because I recognize that the square root of 6 is not a perfect number. So perfect square method does not work. And for 3D, which is the last one, we have 9U to the power of 4 minus 36. You have to always look for a common factor, and in this case, it's 9. So we're going to go ahead and take out the 9 and say 9 times what gives me 9U to the power of 4? Well, 9 times u to the power of 4 gives me 9u to the power of 4. And 9 times negative 4 gives me negative 36. So we know that this is right, but you may have to continue. It may be a difference of squares. If it is a difference of squares, we have to look for the subtraction symbol between the two terms. And there is a subtraction. So here, we know it may be a difference of squares. So let's open up two brackets and say, what times what gives us u to the power of 4? Well, u to the power of 2 times u to the power of 2 gives me u to the power of 4. And what times what gives me negative 4? Negative 2 times positive 2 gives me negative 4. So if you expand this, again, you'll see that it does work. But you also have to check for a difference of squares right here. Now, the reason I know this is not a difference of squares is because I can't open up two brackets and say, what times what gives me 2? Nothing times nothing gives me 2. So this does not work. Actually, there are decimals that gives you um, negative 2, but nothing times nothing as a whole number will give you negative 2. So the final answer is the line that we wrote right above. Now the reason that we don't check for a perfect square right here is because there's a positive. And difference of squares means that there's a negative. So we're actually finished in this line right here. So practice this because these are important and they're tricky. Difference of squares are tricky to see, but there are always two terms and there will always be a negative. So make sure that you study this and you redo all examples. Fa uh, fast forward it if you need to or rewind it at your own um, pace. Just go at your own pace and you'll be fine. Good luck.